Okay, hello. I would like to introduce uh, Natasha Makerska. And uh, I met uh, with Natasha at supermarket Independent Art Fair last year in Stockholm in May. And uh, she has uh, the booth of uh, artisan space garage that did three near to my Altan Kamovka booth. And Natasha is art historian and art uh, director of a uh, design studio in Warsaw now. And she is based in Warsaw. And she graduated from Chaplin uh, University in Krakow. And we, she studied uh, at the uh, Department of Art History. And she prepared uh, some uh, project from uh, Ukraine, from uh, uh, Garage 33, and uh, on some even for a uh, presentation of culture in uh, in Ukraine and uh, with collaboration with Ukraine uh, artists. Yeah. And she prepared for us uh, the lecture, a critical creating art from Gulkit Soul. And then he will start with a lecture, two videos, and with some discussion at the end. Yes, it's your incentive. My art historian and the curatorial studies focus on the issues of interaction between contemporary art and the political, uh, ideological, and ethical conflicts. Uh, I am absolutely sure that politics penetrates all spheres of human existence, including art. As the political events uh, have a tendency to change the development vector of art, uh, directing it at, and uh, even controlling it in many aspects. Um, in Ukraine, which had become a conflict territory, uh, on the world map since 24th February, the contemporary art began to differ and it is perceived as art from conflict zones. Therefore, for all Ukrainian creators, managers, uh, and uh, not only Ukrainian, um, the question arised, such as what is creating art from conflict zones today if we understand creating as a personal choice. How much the political situation in a country is changing curator's choice? Who rules and what do they mean? What to do in case the contemporary art as a sort of a state within the state finds itself in the conflict zone, in the exclusion zone, which is on the markets because it's more radical and provocative for most people who are not able to accept and understand its language as a language for describing new reality. Moreover, as a culture worker um, who engages in critical curating, what concerns me is how do certain practices come to exist on the margins and what happens when they move into or towards the center. How can we use, adapt, absorb, appreciate and benefit from the inclusion of politically engaged works? In my view, naming one practice, critical curating, is predicated upon recognizing that there is a relationship between curating and politics. And uh, during our meeting, um, will be considered cases of uh, one of uh, project uh, which I co-curated, special for uh, um, for supermarket Stockholm art fair, um, where I met yeah. Dr. Lenka Sikora was to support of who I have an honor to be here. Um, Garage 33 Gallery Shelter uh, is an international independent artist-run gallery uh, founded by Ukrainian artist and architect Maria Polikovska 
together with her husband, an architect engineer, Lyub Nichenko. It was founded in 90, uh, uh, sorry, in uh, 2019. Gallery was built in place of the old garage among one of the first garage cooperatives in Kyiv, in the poorest working class district. This depressive and marginalized urban space is entirely consistent with the idea of gallery shelf. It was created for a presentation of art from conflict, artists from conflict territories, art from inclusion zones, art in exile, that is focused on the questions of war, borders, migrations, uh, self-identity. Uh, Garage City Street's foremost mission was to be the safe place for freedom of speech of people who were denied a voice, um, whose voice was taken away. This is why the gallery received the type to prefix shelter. The space as a shelter for conflict art is directly related to artistic creativity of its founder. Maria Polikovska is from Crimea, for old Crim. She was born in Kerch city and uh, after Crimea was illegally annexed by Russia in uh, 2014, she never gone back to her home. Uh, moreover, she was placed on the list on the band artist in Russia. Uh, Maria Polikovska dedicated all her artistic creativity to highlight the conflict questions about war, migration, bureaucracy, and the artist, female artist, place and role in the conflict zone. Therefore, the activity of her gallery, Garage 33, was also focused to bring in one place cultural workers at risk and support them at all levels. After a few days, full-scale invasion started. Maria Kulikovska left Kyiv and later left Ukraine together with her baby. Uh, she continued her performance practices, uh, but with a notice. The art after 24 February, or the wartime art. Participation of our gallery in the supermarket Stockholm Independent Art Fair was agreed nearly two months before, in December. And what is interesting and what is an example of deep research uh, within critical creating is the fact that our project has remained the same like it was before 24 February. It was remained relevant, even thought everything uh, around it uh, uh, had changed and uh, has stayed the same in many aspects. Supermarket 2022 goes under the theme of Honey Fluff. Uh, I read a short manifest of it. Holy fluff is floating around. It has many things intertwining the spiritual and the plague. We take the serious, searching, like-hearted and joyous and put them in a head to find meaning. We want to understand and have fun. Holy fluff is our need for reflecting, believing, questioning, connecting with something beyond the daily reality. It is also longing for a simpler, lighter, carefree existence. You wake up one day, being spirited away on a cloud of fluff. Where are you going? Have you got your answers? Rethinking the 
team of Honey Fluff, we created Honey Brand Yellow and wrote our oven manifest based on the text of Supermarket. Honey Blue and Yellow is our need for reflecting, believing, questioning, connecting with daily reality. Because our reality is not simple, light, kind of free. The reality of middle and Ukrainian people is completely opposite to side pity, peaceful sky, quiet night, great weekend. You wake up one day, may go with the new cycle of blue and yellow. Where are you going? Have you got your answers? In this way, we created Honey Brand Yellow Boot, within which we took a focus for near 20 art pieces created by nine different contemporary Ukrainian artists who were trying to find us answers to these questions for the last nine years. The idea of our space was based on the idea of our gallery uh, that became the gallery in exile. We created a space as a shelter, a meeting place for artists with different backgrounds, different traumas, uh, working with different media, but they all were talking about the same things. They all were united by a similar attitude to new modernity and role of art in it. This desire to change the focus from fun stuff to complica complicated things was necessary for us. We were looking for an understandable language for visitors who should come to have fun and join the Holy Fluff atmosphere. Our pink wood was a bit girlish, childish, harmless and funny, but at first sight. The main starting point of our honey blue and yellow space was a video performance titled, let me say, it's not forgotten, created by Maria Kulikovska with support of Ukrainian uh, video maker Alina Gon. Uh, I would move. Uh, okay. Uh, a short history of this video. Let me say it's not forgotten. Was based on the real incident that happened um, in Donetsk, in the east part of Ukraine, in uh, 2014, uh, where a group of pro-Russian terrorists shot at soap sculptures by Maria Kulikovska, which were exhibited at the uh, Contemporary Art Center. Um, the art center was captured and looted by militants. All sculptures created by, Ma by Maria Kulikovska were destroyed. And science then, Maria Kulikovska created nearly 10 ballistic soap sculptures, the same. And uh, now I want to show you two video works. The first video is the part of film directed by the Ukrainian uh, filmmaker Danya Onyshenko, well, Maria. Shot. Okay. 
okay? The six ballistic soap sculptures were shot by Maria Kulikovska herself on the occasion of the fifth anniversary from the date of the execution of her sculptures in Donetsk. And uh, this performance is a part of a movie. And the next performance This video works were presented during our uh, Holy Grand Yellow uh, exhibition. And what about uh, they are discussed about vulnerability of human body, female body, and artist body. Uh, mm -hmm. Of course, it's about discussion about um, and discussion of transistence of life. And uh, it's a bit similar to this work. Who knows who is actor? No, but with very one students from the empathetic artist. Mark Green here. And a bit to this artist. Who is? <laughs> But okay, or special. Uh, and I would like to pay attention to the material of the sculptures, the ballistic soul. It's very important material for Mary Kulikovska, uh, great DBT, because the ballistic soul uh, is the material which is used in mili military plants for testing of weapons because it has the same density as a human body and it is also translucent so the soap serves as an ideal platform for selecting the best killer weapon. Kulikovska, Kulikovska's video work were correlated with her watercolors from which we created some kind of interaction wall. The series of more than 130 watercolor paintings on the paper received from different migration offices, mainly Swedish, uh, was created by Maria Pulikovska in 2020 and is still continuing. It was an incredible experience to see how visitors were reacting. Um, these are very physically candid drawings, provocative and uh, it would seem erotical at first glance. When you start to understand the context of Maria Polikovska's creativity, uh, about um, uh, the context of uh, situation in uh, Ukraine, in her uh, house land, 
the acts of love are starting to transform to the acts of violence. And uh, the curatorial decision to present these concrete watercolors in this way uh, has the desired feedback and reaction. It was really expression and uh, read as a wall with a specific symbolic meaning. I mean, bathing wall, wall of crying, wall of pain. And some visitors say that it was, it is very close to this works, or is an observer of this works. Fully push on. Yeah. Louis Bourgeois. The image of a female body and it is a pregnant body is found quite often among the works of Maria Kudikovst. The double team mother child, which is important today, especially for Ukraine, uh, is a late motif of our honey blue and yellow food. Uh, here you can see once again Maria Kulikovska, but this photo uh, was created by Berlin based. Ukrainian artist Nanya Bilak, this semitician, semi Rembrandt, semi Baroque scene with pregnant Maria Kulikovska is some kind of personification of pregnant Ukrainian woman, pregnant refugee, and pregnant female artist in conflict reality. Now I want to present you the next participant of our Holy Blue and Yellow project. Um, Katerina Sakheda uh, is a Ukrainian artist from Crimea. Uh, the main character of her works is also pregnant woman. But the basis of Sakheda's work is researching the nature of violence both in the context of her own life and in relation to the political state of her birthplace, the Ukrainian peninsula. Katarina Sahana has been living on the occupied territory since 2014. Uh, we knew her works only through the photos they were presented in our online shop, but we have no opportunity to show uh, them in Kiev before. Our project in uh, Stockholm uh, Supermarket Art Fair was the first place where Katarina Sahana presented her works, and it was very important for us because uh, she is a young uh, artist and uh, for Garst District Gallery Shelter, it's very important to support a uh, young artist. Uh, the complicated new old iconography of pregnant women is correlated with the theme of mother child uh, in conflict zone. The author of this digital work is Ukrainian artist Yulia Bilaeva. It is titled Last Human Mother and Baby. This digital work was created by artist in 2015 when she started to live in Kyiv after war started with little baby on the hand. As Bilaeva says, history will go back to its starting point and only the instincts will remain. Velayeva has replaced the hungry lion and its prey painted by uh, Rousseau with her uh, with herself and her son. This scene raises doubts about 
the mother's intentions. It is the artist's imagination of what we will remain of humankind if reason loses the baton to perennial aggression. If you can see the female teams around which we are building our idea of presenting art during war influenced our choice to present only female artists. We present also uh, an anonymous female artist from Crimea. Uh, she is from um, Kerch City also and her pseudonym, V, came from the first letter of her name. But this symbolical alias, V, was given a new interpretation during Ukrainian-Russian uh, war because Russian use of V symbols on tanks with message to, to victory. During Holy Blue and Yellow, represented five balaclavas by artists as a metaphor of anonymity in the name of safety and freedom for creativity under conditions of uh, occupating and harsh censorship. And what is important, that is the name of, um, of the model of this cap, balaclava. Balaklava is the name of a city on the Crimean Peninsula. And during Cold War, this city had been the submarine base and one of the strategic military objectives of this region. And this pink, also a little a bit childish, funny textile objects were a constant reminder of a vulnerability, of a fragile situation of Ukrainian art and artist. What I want to say, it's me, this balaclavas by we. The Crimean Peninsula, as a conflict zone, has a special place on the cultural map of Ukraine. Unfortunately, the Crimean art scene is pushed aside onto, onto the margins and uh, has remained outside the official discourse of Ukrainian art. It is important fact because Garcity Suisse, um, Crimean, uh, um, Crimean artist is um, Crimean art and Crimea as, a, as an area uh, of art is very important for Garza District Gallery Shelter because um, we collected the art of bodies from the most painful part of our country and it's important when um, you are um, studies critical curating because critical curating is um, studying um, relationship yeah, between curating and politics and this situation. Hollow blue and yellow space was a shelter for different things, even for ironical art pieces as a radical method of speaking about conflict. Uh, these digital paintings were created by Mexico-based Ukrainian artist Svetlana Bedaryeva. She is art historian and the vis uh, visual artist. Uh, that is her last publication. The Morphology of War by Svetlana Bedaryeva have a specific literary-centric and art historian approach to creating. 
Um, it is a study of the war conflicts by using the tool of image from European illuminated manuscripts and bestiaries. Bdariva says that the absurdity of history doesn't change with centuries. It is invoked by particular political events from the war in Ukraine to the terrorist threats in Europe and Syrian crisis. Bidariva's project is an ironical reflection of the ugliness of an armed conflict and it is focused on the idea that each society gives birth to its own monsters. The art project which we have chosen was a Ukrainian boot within the supermarket art fair address the audience without reference to any image, symbols, characters which would be related strongly uh, associated with war in Ukraine. Therefore, our project was perceived not as something personal with regard to the political, but as something political with regard to the personal. We created the mini apartment shelter with TV, with canvas as carpets on the wall, with plates on the floor. Uh, this place, uh, plates uh, were created by Maria Polikovska. Uh, this is her watercolors. And uh, it is reference to the dinner on the floor when people are in the shelters during bombing. And of course, the dinner as a wall, the reference to the Last Supper and all related reflection on the team of sin, sinfulness, good and evil, uh, justice, forgiveness of its impossibility. The artwork which we selected to present in our space were the experiments and physical manifestations of artistic research of the processes of adaptation. Adaptation to difficult political and social environments. The main media for material image It was a human body. The discussion about female body, male body, queer body, anonymous body was a leitmotiv of our uh, shelter. The discussion about its fragility and uh, vulnerability um, to external factors, dependent and independent of artists. In our shelter, we try to present a uh, female body as a body of VAR and from VAR that can change, deform, destroy, and decay. And this body needs to have safe place for representation. And uh, what I want to highlight that the cross team of our honey blue and yellow shelter was a question of impossibility of the free artistic expression on the conflict occupied territory and questions of self identity during occupation. This, in a way, explains why we have present as a gallery shelter. In concluding of story, 
of creation of this space. I would like to say that critical curating should be framed as a creative interve intervention, which acts as a catalyst that merges and circulates discourse within an intellectual and emotive space for negotiation and reaction. And I would like to present the next project created by uh, Barcelona-based um, Ukrainian culture manager, Katarina Pitheimel. Uh, I'm working with her uh, on a book about uh, contemporary Ukrainian uh, sculpture. Uh, I am writing an essay with discussion topic um, uh, conflict sculptures in the public space of Ukraine. So one year ago, one year ago, Katarina Pitheina initiated the project Artist Against War, within which was made an NF NFT exhibition titled Voices of Ukraine. This exhibition features seven Ukrainian artists, including Maria Kulikovska and Yulia, Yulia Belayeva, whose works I show today. What is interesting for me as a critical curator is how the physical artworks, which were reinterpreted by critical curating methods, how they function in the online space, in metaverse. They created an oasis in the middle of the star that can be considered in different ways as a place for art in exile or as a reflection upon the theme of forced migration, losing the home, finding own space for, for the world. Of course, this is a place shelter. One of the many or the last. Uh, the place as a shelter in the war, in the world destroyed, destroyed by war or by something like this. Uh, voices of Ukraine as well as Holy Blue and Yellow Project has an important message for all culture workers even if no one's around even if faced land around, the art and culture will always remain the our machine. What will we leave behind? Ash, emptiness, death. What will we need to avoid this? How can we do this? Referencing history using our voices, uh, using uh, well-known methods of critical curating, well-known methods uh, of representation of art, creating uh, new methods of speaking about conflict. Uh, how we can do this studying critical curating, discussing how the old is correlated with the new, how local is changing the global, how political is becoming personal, how political is changing personal, how personal is changing political. We need to find answers and methods of speaking about war about artists 
from conflict zones. Um, we need to discuss about how war is changing art, artist, art community, and art history. And uh, we must to do where we can because if the world crumbles around us, the art community cannot remain silent. Thanks a lot for your time. And uh, maybe you have a question. Yeah. Uh, I found out that uh, in the European Union, a lot of people consider year 2022 as a year of beginning of Russian Ukrainian war. And uh, in your lecture, you was talking about uh, that after 2022, we can talk about post war art uh, no, in the MLE Gray. And then at the same time, uh, you were talking about artists working with and uh, including artists uh, who was affected by Russia Ukrainian war since 2014. So I was interested how you dealing with the timing and with the timeline and why you choose 2022 as a starting point to 2014. Uh, actually, thank you for your question. Um, what is important for me as a curator of uh, Holy Blue and Yellow, yeah? To present people, to present visitors that we are um, discussing about war, not from 2022, but from 2014. And it's important because, uh, for example, Valery Kulikovska created her performances with Ukrainian flag in 2015. And at that time, it was something a bit crazy, not understandable. Ukrainian patriots, uh, it was it was very uh, discussing and um, not not understandable for Ukrainian people at 2015. But now. The same performance from 2015, it's something, it's, it's normally, it's ordinary performance with the Ukrainian flag. It's, it's not, it's okay. And it's, um, very important, um, uh, for the Rangers. creating the space with works from different battles. And uh, this MOOCs looked to perceived as something um, full and, and something contemporary and from Nova days. Yeah. Yes, I'm Jew. And uh, uh, I was wearing it amazed by this project. I haven't seen it before. When I'm very nice performing at Mariupol Beach and exactly as you see, after like seven years, it had like an extra layer of meaning and um, it's only like developing its um, yeah, story um, as amazing folds. Yeah, I can tell a bit more about Is it Skep? Uh -huh. Yeah, this performance um, was created by Marko Yukovka. She is here on the, on the beach. And uh, uh, here is, here are militants. And uh, this place is, is a beach on the borders between Mariupol and Donetsk. 
and Mariupol is now totally occupied by Russians. And uh, Maria Polikovska, maybe it's secret, but uh, Maria Polikovska dreamed about uh, to do this performance once again. But maybe Mariupol will will deoccupy it because now it's 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 not not safe. Yeah, but what is important in twenty sixteen this performance was it was something like the creative woman from Cape City doing something on the beach of Mariupol. But now it's what she she doing she she was doing it in twenty sixteen? Oh press um and the TV's uh, service um was very very funny for it it's and but now it's it's so great. And now Maria Kulikovska uh she is um, I know how it's uh, in English for with She first me some of you words. Yeah, yeah. And it, it it's important for artists to see more that uh, that people let's see. And some any question, Professor? Okay, and thank you very much for your thank you great uh, lecture. Thank you for your ears. <laughs>